If you're innocent of the underlying crime, then everything they're talking about is an effort for him to defend himself. So if I tell somebody that I'm innocent, please testify on my behalf and say what happened. Am I obstructing justice or am I defending myself and, and serving justice? Rudy Giuliani there telling Fox and Friends this morning Democrats have no case for obstruction of justice against President Trump. As we await the president to leave the White House, it could be happening just a short time from now, and head to Atlanta for an opioid abuse summit this afternoon. We could hear from him on the fight with House Democrats over subpoenas for some former top White House aides. But first, we speak with Kellyanne Conway at the White House. Kellyanne, good morning to you. Good morning, Sandra. So how far does the president plan to go to fight this request? He gave an interview to The Washington Post where he made very clear that there's really no reason to comply with all these requests when we have the Mueller investigation. We have already spent 30 million plus of taxpayer dollars in 22 months and 2,800 subpoenas, 500 witnesses, a million pieces of documentation uh, to try to get to the bottom of this. And indeed, Director Mueller did. I believe too many people are invested in this investigation and they had a conclusion in search of evidence and they're disappointed in Director Mueller harassing he and his wife as they're leaving Easter services. Uh, who really wanted a different result, but that's not the way our, ju our, our justice system works, and that's not the way prosecutions and investigations work. This was very simply, when you prosecute and you investigate, you either refer for indictment or you decline to refer for indictment. The rest, frankly, is a little bit gratuitous for some who are still looking and searching for a way to get the president. I also believe, Sandra, that people are right in this country to look at the Mueller investigation as the definitive, conclusive, nonpartisan, taxpayer-funded investigation that in the actual Mueller report makes clear the executive branch, the president himself, never interfered, never impeded, never obstructed that investigation, in fact, made available all these people from the White House and, and from his campaign, but as you know, all the that's documentation. Not stopping, that's not stopping Democrats from wanting more. Well, it's going to cost them. It's it, going to cost them precious political cost currency. Them? Is the president willing to, to use executive pri privilege here? Possibly. And I will tell you something that this president, I think the Democrats, have a decision to make. Are you going to talk for the rest of 2019 into 2020 about impeachment or infrastructure, about drug pricing or dragging down a president, about health care or Donald Trump, 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 Trump at all times? They have to be honest with the people of this country whom they also represent as to whether they are serious about having bipartisan action to try to solve the problems of this nation. Look where the president and the first lady are going today to this RX summit in Atlanta where all the stakeholders and decision makers and practitioners a gather once a year. This president and the first lady have worked together to combat the opiate crisis, including in a bipartisan piece of legislation last year, the largest amount of funding, the largest single action legislatively on any drug crisis in our nation's yeah. history. The president did that with every single Democratic vote. So he's ready to keep doing that on infrastructure, on drug pricing, on health care. And I know he's got a big day coming up day. on that. I just want to run a couple things past you. Here's what Hillary Clinton is saying on the Mueller report. Let's, let's listen to this first. I think there's enough there that any other person who had um, engaged in those acts uh, would certainly uh, have been indicted. The whole matter of obstruction was very directly uh, sent to the Congress. I know there's a lot of folks crying at hypocrisy there, and I, I know you're going to have reaction to that, but we need to know if executive privilege is on the table for the president at this point. Executive privilege, of course, is on the table for the president at this point. But that's not what she was talking about. Uh, what she said, apart from being irrelevant and partisan, is, is just wrong. That anybody else would have been indicted. The Mueller report did not indict the president. The Mueller did not indict the president. There was enormous pressure on the Mueller investigation and investigators to do what she failed to do, which is deny Donald Trump the presidency. And she's, this, this woman has always blamed everybody but her, the pathetic candidate and poor campaign that she ran and was. Uh, it's always it's Jim Comey's fault, it's Russia's fault, it's Donald Trump's fault, it's Wisconsin's fault. It, it, and it's, apart from that, if she wants the entire Mueller report to, uh, to make its way into the public, uh, let's have at it. Because I understood in the news accounts yesterday that part of the redactions include uh, her husband and Monica Lewinsky. I didn't put it in the Mueller report. That's a 20-year-old episode. 
Uh, but it's actually, I understand through news accounts, in part of the redacted portions of the Mueller report, mm -hmm. of all things. And she's got some experience on impeachment because her husband actually was impeached by the House of Representatives. But he was impeached because he lied under oath on August 17, okay. 1999, to, or 98, to investigators. Always such limited time, and I have a lot to get to. So, and I want to talk about what the president uh, has coming up today. But first, I want to ask you about Joe Biden. He is expected to enter the race this week. What does the president think about a potential contest against Joe Biden? Bring it on. Bring them all on. I think Biden's timing actually benefited him. If somebody has been critical about, you know, will you, won't you, uh, the, the poor sort of non-rollout rollout for a non-candidate, because he kept flubbing and kept stepping all over himself, and he had to put out the video about hugging and s sniffing women's hair, et cetera. Uh, I think Biden's timing actually benefits him, because the Democrats seem really desperate to find an alternative to Bernie Sanders, who's the clear announced front runner right now. In the polling and on the ground, Bernie Sanders has a lot in common with Donald Trump, which is he doesn't really care what his party thinks about his candidacy at, at, at this point in the primaries. He's connecting directly with the voters. He's raising small dollar amounts. Uh, the only difference between Bernie Sanders and Donald Trump is Bernie Sanders' ideas are terrible for America. And Donald Trump was a much better candidate, had connected right. tissue with the people. And so I think Biden will be seen as the alternative to Bernie Sanders. But he's got a lot of people in his way. And look, old, white, male career politicians like Bernie Sanders and Joe Biden is not exactly what the Democratic Party had in mind for 2020 when mm -hmm. they're running uh, all these different folks who are, are are talking about identity politics and what makes them different. And, the, you know, the women are complaining, too. I see women on TV complaining about the female candidates aren't covered the same. That's just hogwash. They just have terrible ideas. Uh, well, Nobody we'll, wants we'll a government takeover of health care. I want to ask you about the day, though. I know that, that fighting opioid abuse is, is, is something that you have taken on and spent a lot of time on in the White House. The president joins you today. He's about to depart. What is today all about, Kellyanne? So the RX Summit is the annual gathering of practitioners and stakeholders and decision makers to break the back of this opioid crisis and heroin, meth, uh, all, all the different drugs that are coming through. This president has had a whole of government approach on the whole person. And we've got, I think today will be a progress report of sorts. Other presidents and other principals have addressed the summit, but no one has ever been able to go there and talk about the progress. We have a reduction in first prescriptions of over 30 percent in just the last year plus. We have more people in this country, particularly tweens and teens, in treatment than ever before. That H.R. 6, that legislation last year, secured record amounts of funding and a lot of the drug-free community grants, uh, $90 million last year, $6 billion in funding through H.R. 6. We are getting more people into treatment and into recovery. And when problem. they come out... When they come out, Sandra, we're trying to treat the whole person, help connect them with a job, help connect them with housing, help yeah. connect, connect them with reskilling and workforce opportunities. The First Lady's been on the front lines, too, through her Be Best platform, yeah. helping that, those neonatal abstinence syndrome babies who are born chemically dependent. I know it's a huge effort on the, on the part of the White House, yes. and I know that you've been spending a lot of time on that, Kelly. And we appreciate your time this morning, and we Thank anticipate you, the President's departure a short time from now. Thank you. Thank you.